Hey there, fearless gamers. This is the Stark Lord. Um, I know you've read the top already, and this is not going to be talking about Sisters of Battle today. Uh, we'll get back to that in a bit. Uh, as you know, 6th edition just came out. This is uh, July 3rd when I'm recording this, by the way. So I actually haven't read the book yet, because of the new uh, big rule book yet, because I haven't gotten it in the mail. So before we get back to doing them, let's talk about some other stuff. Uh, now at Fearless Games, we don't just talk about 40k. It's the big game. We love talking about it. We all love playing it. There's other stuff out there. We're going to talk about Dystopian Wars a little bit. Uh, I'm going to unbox some stuff I got, show you my terrible paint job, but let's just uh, talk about these guys. Now, Dystopian Wars is made by a company called Spartan Games. Um, they make three games right now. All of them are naval-style battle games. They basically have the market cornered on this. I can only think of five naval games out there right now. Uh, one of them is dead. The other one's not supported by the company that makes it. And then there's the three these guys make. Uh, they have Uncharted Seas, which is their fantasy game. They have Firestorm Armada, which is their sci-fi game. And they have my favorite, Dystopian Wars, which is steampunk. Again, for people who don't know steampunk, uh, it's also known as retrofuturism. It's basically take uh, Victorian science fiction and have a ball with it. Uh, very Jules Verne, uh, that kind of stuff. Hmm. So, and this is very traditional steampunk. It's not like some people call War Machine steampunk. It is not the catch name on it is Steam Powered Fantasy. Uh, I wouldn't even call it that. Uh, sorry, I'm just bashing Warham War Machine for a second here. Not because I don't like it, just because it's not steampunk. This is steampunk. Steampunk is very much set in a, uh, again, it's, it's science fiction, but science fiction from the turn of the century. Uh, big rotors, uh, steam power. I mean, you can get a little silly with it, like, you know, bullets to the moon, which again, the Jules Verne thing. But uh, it's, it's, it's a very traditional sci-fi. Um, so again, Dystopian Wars, again, the naval battle, but it's really more than that. The reason this is a cool game is it's technically total battle, I guess would be the best word for it, because it's not just naval ships fighting, there's also air forces and land forces. Um, so it makes for a very big total war game. It's all about big giant ships blowing the crap out of each other. Um, this is the 1.1 edition of this book. Quick review of it. Um, the first edition was pretty good. This one expands that a little better, has a lot cooler pictures, more great background. One thing they didn't put in here that I hope they would have was uh, the rules for the uh, Covenant of Antarctica, the COA. Because uh, they have rules, it's in their starter box, it's not in here, it drives me crazy. Uh, they have pictures of those models, even have the French models in here, but they don't have the rules for those yet, or they will soon. Maybe they do have them now, they probably do, I think the starter came out. Anyways, so, beautiful book, uh, it's not big, it's a pretty short book, right? Almost all of this thing is, is I mean, let's see, let's find. It's a good intermix of rules. Uh, the whole back is rules for everything in the book right now. I don't want to show this because I think there might be a copyright crap with that. I'm sure they wouldn't care. The uh, Spartan guys are pretty awesome. But, like, everybody's got, you know, rules for pretty much everything they make right now for the four main groups uh, is in here. Uh, they have, they will have, I think, eight or nine factions when they're finally done making everything. They have five out right now at this second with a fifth, uh, sixth one coming out soon. Uh, they got, you know, the Federated States of America, the Empire of the Blazing Sun, uh, whatever they call the United Kingdom, uh, Kingdom of Britannia, and I'm forgetting one of the four first ones. I'm feeling bad now. They were cool. Uh, the Prussian Empire. And then they added the Covenant of Antarctica, which is their super sci-fi one. Um, so it's a cool game. Lots of big ships, lots of flying ships, uh, robots, explosions. Awesome. Uh, any... If you play any uh, Spartan game, like you've tried Uncharted Seas or Firestorm Armada, all the rules are kind of similar, just like uh, Warhammer Fantasy and Warhammer 40k have similar rules but different. Same thing here. Um, I definitely think if you're into naval combat games, try them out. I mean, even their land ships, they're so big they still call them ships, work like boats in that they have turning radiuses and whatnot. I mean, they don't have conserved momentum, I don't think, with the land ships. Or if they do, they probably have special rules for stopping short. But uh, it's a very cool game, uh, interesting rules, quick and easy to learn, and we're going to take a look at the models in a second, so I'm just going to switch the camera view, so we'll see you in about 30 seconds. They're properly, I'm still learning how to edit. Uh, so here we have uh, my first two ships, I'm painting one, I'm working on the other. Uh, I know the paint job's not that great right now, um, but these are two flying Daedalus class uh, medium flyers for the... Uh, Covenant of Antarctica. Uh, again, the detail on these models is great. I, if I had a high-definition camera, I would love to show you these better, eventually, I'm sure. 
let me get my light over a bit better. There you go. So there's a crazy amount of detail on these little guys. Again, sorry for the ugly color choice. This is going to be copper instead of brass. It was a bad choice there. Um, lots of rivets. Uh, these models come out of the package pretty much perfect. Uh, quick review of things you look for when you take something out. You look for mold lines, flash, and venting. Uh, since these are not metal models, you don't have to worry about venting, so you just have to worry about mold lines and flash. Um, Dystopian Wars, or at least most Spartan stuff, has practically none of either. Um, for most part, mold lines don't show up, especially with the naval models, which I'm showing, I'll show you in a second, because of how they mold them. And if you don't have mold lines, flash is almost not really an issue. So let's take a look at this. So let's get these two out of the way as I'm working on them. I'll show you these guys when the whole fleet's finished in a couple of weeks, hopefully, when I have time. So here we have the starter box for the naval group. And here is pretty much everything you see, and then some, as in there's more models than shown here. It's packaged kind of in a haphazard way, everything just in bubble wrap, which isn't bad, but could be better. But then again, they fit so much crap in here that you basically need to bubble wrap it. There's all of that. Here's all your rule cards for everything, which every model has a rule card. Sorry, that was off screen, wasn't it? Every model's got a rule card. It's good. It's got your rules in the back, information on the front, point costs, and their weapons. Very handy. Uh, what else is in here? Ads. Yeah, we're going to give the ads a little cry here. Other Spartan games. Check it out. And then Battle Foam, who works with, like, everybody, because they love everybody. Um, what else we got? We got, give you token sheets, because you're going to need these for this game. And you got, oh god, there's still more crap in here. You got the rules. Um, this is the mini rule book for the Covenant of Antarctica. Sorry if there's a lot of glare. Um, let me bring this back a little. There we go. So yeah, uh, the Covenant of Antarctica and the Republic of France will both have these and any other additional ones that don't have their rules in the core book. Oh, there we go. I moved the light. Hooray! Uh, more counter... Oh, not counters. More uh, templates for your explosions and stuff. And turning templates. More tokens. There's a lot in these starter packs. And they come in for about... I think they run about $60 US standard. Uh, I bought mine from Battle Wagon Bits or the War Store, same place, uh, which is situated on Long Island, which is where I live, but I've never actually been to the physical store because it's at the other end of this island, which is called Long for a reason. It takes me about two hours to get out there. Um, so, ordered it online, it cost me like 43 bucks. so check them out because they usually have stuff pretty cheap for us Americans, and I think they have $5 shipping everywhere or 5 and change. Let's take a look at these models. I have to get under my camera for a second. Okay, so important thing really quick. Uh, look at the rules before you put any of these guys together. Simply because with the big guy, where are you? You check him out. Awesome detail, by the way. You have this big piece and this little piece. And you know your natural inclination is just to glue them together, right? Uh, you don't because you have special rules where you just have this piece above water and this little template around them. And you kind of like partially submerged is very cool. Uh, I'm gonna move the camera for a second so we can actually look at this stuff. That'd be nice, right? Here we go. It's like I know what I'm doing. Uh, clearly I don't. <laughs> Here we go. Is that good, everybody? Uh, I know you can't respond until after I put this up, but I'm gonna ask you anyways. So, again, there's great detail. You notice there's no nothing really to clean off of these, because pretty much they're molded upside down, probably. So if there's any mold lines, they'd be down here, which you want to see because this is the mold line since they're flat bold. That's the nice thing about doing naval stuff is you basically just can just pour mold and it'll be pretty. Uh, great detail. These are where the little turrets are going to be. Here, here, and here. And there's a fourth one back here. There's a ton of those. Uh, let's show you the rest of these guys. I don't remember the names of any of these ships because they're on those cards that I already put down. Uh, here are the cruisers that came with it. So these are medium sized cruisers that complements to those flying medium guys I showed you before. They're a nice size. Uh, let me get Mr. Uh, told you how big everyone is scale-wise in the shot. This is my little marine buddy, so you can get an idea of how big things are. Uh, you know, he's. I think everyone plays with 40k models. You know how big stuff is based on one of them. So here you go. It's like a. It's a pretty decent sized piece of plastic or resin. Resin. That's the right word there. Uh, what else we got in here? So we get three of those guys. You get six destroyers, which are these little guys. I'm just showing you my thumb, sorry. <laughs> See if I can get them. And by six, I think I actually meant nine. Uh, my math is not good today. Oh, dropping stuff. So you got 
Are these guys in frame? No, they're not. Sorry, this is hard to do. I should have planned this. Oops. Let me pull back a little. There you go. See those little dudes? They get these little guys. Again, nice amount of detail. Uh, the only thing I can say about these guys, when you pull everyone out, again, most stuff... Oh, wait, wait, here we go. Here's some Flash. That's Flash. For all those who are questioning what the heck I talk about sometimes. And I can't get to show up right on camera. There we go. That little edge right there. It's a little extra bit of resin that got stuck in the mold. Anyways, um, one recommendation when you paint these guys, wash them first. Just uh, lukewarm water. Uh, lukewarm being room temperature at best. Uh, with a little bit of uh, soap. Very minor bit of Dawn or whatever dish soap you got. Lightly rinse. And then paint them because there's still a little bit of release agent on these guys usually. And you got two medium flyers. And these are just... Uh, it's just a bomber again. Cool little giant fan thing. There's a little cockpit up here. Big propellery dudes. Um, again, everything for Dystopian Wars is either resin or white metal. Uh, I don't think you need the wash metal, but you might as well. I mean, there's a little discoloration on this guy. That's not a big deal. That's probably just some, something going wrong with the release agent, but that doesn't cause any damage. Uh, the other part of the big ship, that template I mentioned for him. So, you know, you sit this here and he's all like, I'm half underwater and I'm blowing stuff up. Yeah, just like that. Silly voices and everything. And then you get a bunch of flyer tokens. Uh, these are going to be important in the game, I hope. Uh, these are your miniature flyer tokens. You just get a bunch of these for every group. It's nice that each group has a different looking flyer. I look forward to painting these. A lot of people paint these up looking like they have like an energy canister here, because they're all like they're just like mechanical drones. They're not even piloted by people. Uh, again, there's some flash here, just gets cut right off. There's almost nothing wrong with these models when you get them out of the bag. I have not done anything to them. I've just opened this a couple of times to make sure everything's in there, and that's been it. I'm just going to throw these here, whatever. The last little bits are these little turrets, which go all over your big ships. Can I get you to focus on you? Ugh, it's not focusing. Sorry, sorry. Let's try to... Look at my ugly hand, everybody. Yeah, well, anyway, this is a really tiny, uh, turrety thing. And these go on the, again, the turret sponsons, uh, this little circle up here. They just kind of flop on here, though, again, this has a flash on it again, so I'd have to do a little cleaning. I was originally going to magnetize everyone so I could switch these out, and then I realized, you know, uh, you don't really need to. I'm just going to put them in their own little special container on the side of my carrying case, and then when I decide what I want to use, I want to use these energy things or the mortars that come with it, just gonna switch it around because there's enough to put both on everything which is really cool um, so you can have everyone with the standard gun or with the energy gun which has different rules for it which is very nice um, these are great starter packs um, they're all again they're somewhere between 40 and 60 US uh, again I got mine for 43 uh, definitely check out Battle Wagon Bits I'll put a link to them below as I will for Spartan Games down there Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about Spartan Game stuff, definitely check out their forums or ask me. I'm still new to this, so I don't have a lot of answers, but uh, their forums are highly active. Uh, and the Spartan guys are on them, and they do answer questions, and they're very good about it. Their official facts are basically their forum. Um, so check them out. I hope you enjoyed, and next video I do, we'll be going back to Sisters of Battle, since we're going to finish them up and talk more about 6th edition. Thanks for watching. Like if you like. Tell me what you hated. Tell me what you loved. If you didn't love anything, I'm sorry. You're not a good person. Okay. Thanks for watching. Stark Lord out.